Welcome to the day two at the Shanghai Auto Show. I just been a couple of minutes at the Neo booth, which still seems to be at least one of the most popular, if not the most popular. Generally today it's more traffic than yesterday, although now that I started filming it's already, um, you know, we are uh, behind the peak hours, I would say, um, because uh, it's gonna close in uh, like 50 minutes, so it's not as many people here as there used to be today, but generally it's been much more packed. So in the background, you can still see people checking out the cars, um, and the Neo booth is very, very busy. I got a drink from one of a very attentive um, Neo employees there, and I met a patron with whom I shot another video. Um, here, just uh, next to it, there is Seeker, and I've also checked out uh, Seeker X. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't um, sitting behind the steering wheel yet, but maybe I'll organize a test drive later on about um, a car that I think is, you know, quite hot uh, in terms of the media perception as well. Um, generally, Seeker has been one of my positive surprises, I should say coming to China. Um, I didn't like the designs when I just saw them on the photos because um, back in 2019 when I was been the last time in China I didn't actually check Seeker out and I mostly thought of them as a copycat brand uh, because there are many of them. Uh, many many Chinese young upcoming brands which are copycats only. Um, much different to what I think Neo is um, and I have to say Seeker is not um, one of those um, brands that have no profile or no USP. Uh, but let me check a little bit more here, give you some um, impressions just to show you how people are checking out the cars and are sitting here next to where the battery swap station 3.0 is established. Um, so generally it's a very big booth of course for Neo. Um, and what they're doing here, which I noticed, is collecting lots of uh, phone numbers or um, app installations, uh, which is kind of the key for Neo. So in order to get those kind of drinks, you need to register with the Neo app and uh, spend Neo points, right? And that's what they are doing here. All of the the stuff in the blue jackets is uh, doing that with people. So in order that they can actually. Um, queue up here and uh, collect a drink and this is of course user acquisition in the end because this will help Neo to follow up with potential uh, leads or maybe those people if they are very young and just um, interested in the company maybe start to to shop something in the app and buy some goods right uh, and that might be a first um, entry uh, I noticed actually quite a few people here interested in the ET7 whereas um, you know that's not the most hot model actually right should be the ET5 but I can't really see from the booth itself that there is a, a preference for any type of new cars I think all of them are really receiving lots of interest here of uh, people checking them out and um, yeah, maybe I should ask some people what they think about it. Of course, also a couple of foreigners in here. Uh, as I mentioned, lots of people are benchmarking Neo. That these might be. It's still um, not an open show for everybody. Today is like the professionals visiting. Um, so there might be lots of automotive executives here uh, checking this out. So um, don't be surprised to see lots of foreign faces here at Neo because I think the German automotive industry or others are seeing them as a big competitor, right? And the uh, EC7, I think it's also getting lots of people interested. Uh, the ES8, where, where is it? Let me find it. Yeah, there's just one example here, one sample car. And it's not open, so people can actually not Go inside the ES8. It looks a little bit like a Liauto from the back, right? Uh, it's a very much larger volume car. You can see that 
Um, I think I'm more excited about this one actually right now than the updated ET7, I have to say, somehow. Um, yeah, I can't get away from this feeling that there should have been a little tiny bit more of an improvement for the ET7, but I'm, I'm hearing that there might be a much larger upgrade coming for the for the ET7 even afterwards. Um, so this is just a slight a slight um, change this time. Yeah. So, anyways, just some impressions that I like to show with, um, to you. I think I'm not gonna go more inside the um, Neo booth. Instead, maybe let me show you also some some other brands here, just that you get a feeling of the venue. This is obviously another you know, the very important part of the show here, where the most um, most important Chinese brands are, the upcoming car brands. Uh, some said that this is the scary hall for the German automotive industry here, so the German executives don't even dare to get in here. <laughs> I'm um, just kidding. Anyways, this is Seeker. Um, that's the Seeker X. I I said inside it. Um, I think it's um, it's alright. It's alright. Um, as I mentioned before, like Seeker generally it impresses me. Um, it seems to be that they found their niche, and I think definitely they are stealing some sales from the uh, maybe from the ET5 even. Um, but it, you know, when I'm inside of it, um, and also more in general, I'm not like um, really, really kind of uh, in love with this car. I have to say, um, it's certainly going to do well, I think, and it's uh, it's very popular here. But it's definitely not as premium as Neo. This, this I can say with certainty. Um, but as you can see, there's also lots of people here at the Seeker booth. Um, I would say it's pretty much the same as with the Neo booth right now. So let's say they are on par right now at this point in time. Yeah, and the Seeker X is, um, you know, there's definitely a preference for the X here on the booth. So that's different to Neo where most of the cars have like um, uh, an even number of people checking them out but here most of the people are actually trying to check out the, uh, the Seeker X and not so much uh, some of the other uh, like the, uh, the 001 so let's hop over to Xpon maybe I should check back actually I'm not sure if I'm still in Shanghai but uh, during the uh, normal visitor days um, because that might give you give us an impression like where the average consumer is heading right so now this is um the expan booth and um i sat in a new uh, g6 yesterday and if you are one of my patrons and you know uh, that I, this got me actually bullish on Xpeng for the first time. Um, you may know that I've been quite vocal about Xpeng because of their um, non-existing branding strategy, in my point of view, and the lower product quality. But the G6, I think, could be a very interesting car. However, I also thought that about the G9, and I actually uh, quite enjoyed it when I was sitting inside and experiencing for example you know the entertainment part which is you know techy well done um, but then yesterday I also met with some EV industry insiders actually some of those videos who are like China driven you might know uh, Will and um, also Elliot um, so you, if you know those channels um, they are obviously about testing cars driving cars and I'm, I'm having a different angle on on all of these topics here because I'm rather looking from an investment angle around those things so the product is just one part of it right the, 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 the problem is uh, can this be an investment case or not and um, so that 
the product is part of this investment thesis, of course, because it needs to have a good positioning. And um, it's ultimately what's unlocking, let's say, margins and cash flows, right? Um, anyways, I was talking with those guys who have obviously this different, more product-centered view. And um, to my surprise, they were very negative on Axpong. So the day that I just finally got a little bit bullish on Xpong because of the G6, um, they were actually like talking my ideas about uh, that this is a good car uh, down a little bit. And that was surprising to see because before that I actually always had the impression that I am more negative than most of people out there about Xpong. Anyways, uh, also a little surprise here for me is that in the back you see the Aito, which is uh, kind of the Huawei car, right? And I've been benchmarking that one. I've been driving with it. Uh, very impressive um, self-driving, um, at least in some of the other ones, like the Avatar. I've been self-driving, uh, test testing the self-driving capabilities. And um, anyways, uh, if you go to Huawei stores, like in, in Shanghai downtown, it's always very, very packed. But here there is not really too much traffic it's rather empty. That's interesting. I wonder why. I'm, I'm wondering if the Huawei stores are just mainly packed because of other things and then they can drive the attention to the cars. Uh, and I think ultimately the Aito is only going to show um, you know, what can be done with the Harmony OS. I think ultimately Huawei will possibly resonate or will, will um, go back to not working on their own cars. Um, I know it's a series um, corporation, so they're not uh, actually manufacturing it itself. But um, uh, I think they were, they're just using it as a showcase and are not gonna do that in the future. I think they're just trying to get their software into some, some of the smaller um, car manufacturers. By the way, this is Lincoln Co. There's not much traction right now. This booth has been packed, really, really packed before. So sometimes this also depends a little bit on um, if there's an activity going on. So this is one of the most creative booths here, actually, I have to say, um, in terms of that they have some activities lined up here. It seems to be some sort of an AR, VR um, experience. And then, um, you know, you can see what's going on here with the displays and inside of it there's even more entertainment and experiences Lincoln Co famously also using a community angle similar to um, Neo and also a subscription model right and uh, yeah you can see they have heavily invested in um, coming up with a creative store or um, booth and experience concept here. Uh, so lots going on here, except for the fact that there are not too many people checking out the cars. Um, I know I, I always find them rather ugly, but um, in Europe there are many car there are many Lincoln Co's on on the roads actually. So um, and who am I to judge? This is of course a very personal experience but I just want to show you you know how they compare to some of the of the others now Li Xiang Li Auto which is currently the star of the stock market when it comes to the Chinese list US listed companies um, is also fairly busy I would say that is Pretty much comparable to Neo, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit less than Neo and Seeker. Very down to earth store concept. Nothing, nothing too flashy, nothing too shiny. Um, very solid. Uh, I also mentioned or noticed how um, the sales stuff is also quite. Um, how should I say, they seem to be well-educated, smart, um, really easy going. They are down to earth, uh, oftentimes 
uh, young ladies actually when I made my Li Auto test drive just recently I was also driven by a young lady and that's possibly because they are the ones driving the decision in the purchasing decision in uh, in, uh, when families are trying to decide for a car. And well, um, I can see how this might be impressing lots of people here at the show, like um, the, the car is giving you a very nice experience with the entertainment system, with the you know, nice big seats, roomy, roomy um, car. So this is um, very nice. Um, also a little bit of a chill out area but there are not too many people um, yeah I think that's rather kind of a hygiene factor by now this is not a very very big booth here yeah. but most of the booths here have this kind of a waiting area or seating area where people can relax. Anyways, there's not too much difference here in terms of traffic. And um, oh yeah, that's interesting. With the, the charging stations. Because this is of course a topic that Nia, uh, Lee Auto has to work on. Uh, because they haven't got much infrastructure yet and of course they want to go fully electric so the question is um, whether they can and suddenly they also need to invest money into building that and securing real estate in terms of what you're doing with battery swap stations or what Tesla's doing with superchargers um, yeah not too many branded e-auto charging stations yet possibly we'll see whether or not this turns out to be one of those uh, disadvantages over time now here Neta it's the English name of his Chinese brand uh, it's very very sporty uh, I don't like it to be honest um, I think the, the cars are rather cheap but uh, cheap can be good in this regard because um, as you can see here, the NATO S uh, is actually a you know, very sporty looking um, car that is selling at a not too high price. So actually, um, I think this kind of speaking also to the, let's say the Xpeng P7 um, owner, the potential one, and also, yeah, might steal some sales from Neo from the ET7 or ET5. Um, it's made more like a toys car for for men, I would characterize. Could be wrong on that, but it's just my impression. Uh, and um, but you know, I've been sitting in it, and um, yeah, I'm not a fan of the quality how it's built. I think it's rather cheap, but uh, technology is impressive, and uh, of course, the, the exterior design also is um, flashy and chic, and uh, will possibly be popular with many people actually there are quite a few people checking out these cars still at this point in time so yeah these are some of the impressions here um, mainly from the most popular side here I think I will go also to BBA which are uh, Benz BMW uh, and uh, Audi and show you a comparison like how it's looking at the traditional brands so thanks for watching and see you in that next video